Okay, this is section 15.3. We're going to talk about thermochemical equations. Our objectives is to write thermochemical equations for chemical reactions. In another process, we're going to describe how the energy is lost or gained during changes of state. Changes of state is going from you know, solid to liquid or liquid to gas or back and forth between there. And do some calculations on heat absorbed or released in a chemical reaction. Combustion reaction, remember what that is. That's a reaction that occurs when a substance reacts with oxygen, releasing energy. It also releases in the forms of, that energy gets released in the forms of heat and light. Okay, so we've got all this new vocab we're gonna go over. And the main idea is that thermal chemical equations express the amount of heat released or absorbed by chemical reactions. Okay, so this, these are two thermal chemical equations. And it's a balanced, thermal chemical equation is a balanced chemical equation that includes the physical state of all the reactants and the energy change. So the first one we have is the heat pack, and the second one here is the cold pack. So the heat pack is iron and oxygen combined to form iron, this uh, form of iron oxide, and it releases this 1,625 kilojoules of heat. Okay, so it has all the states, solid, gas, makes a solid, and it has this, um, how much heat is released. Same thing for um, this reaction has the um, ammonium nitrate and it is in that reaction and how much heat is absorbed for that 27 kilojoules of heat is absorbed the enthalpy and in, in parenthesis heat of combustion of a substance is the enthalpy change for the complete burning of one mole of a substance so all these enthalpy delta H's we're going to figure out these changes in heat have to do with one mole of whatever we're talking about here. The thermochemical equation um, below here this is for glucose okay so this is glucose burned with you know uh, six moles of oxygen makes six moles of carbon dioxide and six moles of water okay so this is we burn one mole of glucose we're going to get a little over 2800 kilojoules of heat released okay so that's what this means for one mole of this that's how many kilojoules we're going to get released here that's what the thermochemical equations mean and these are um, standard enthalpies of combustion for some other things octanes and gasoline glucose we just did sucrose table sugar propane methane all release different amounts of energy per mole uh, these are kilojoules per mole. Okay, so it's important to read, remember that these numbers here are how much kilojoules per moles. Mole, and then we also we can use the molar enthalpy of vaporization, molar enthalpy of fusion. So vaporization, if we're to vaporize one mole of a substance, right? That's how much energy it takes to change it from a liquid to a gas. Heat of fusion is to melt one mole of a solid substance. So if we have something solid, we want to add heat to it to change it to a liquid. This is the molar enthalpy of fusion. So fusion is melting, vaporization turning into a gas. Okay, so these are some different um, heats of vaporization and fusion for water, right? For vaporizing water, for melting water, and so forth for the other um, chemicals on this list. Okay, so for a phase change of water, right, we have um, solid ice down here. The um, heat of fusion is we have to add six kilojoules to melt the ice, change it to water. Okay, the water to change it to gas, we have to add. 40 kilojoules to change that water to a vapor per mole and the condensation and uh, delta H of um, changing it to a solid 
are the same numbers the opposite way, right? Vaporization and condensation are flip sides of the same thing. Fusion and turn into a solid, same thing. Okay, combustion is reaction with fuel with oxygen. That's what happens in your cars when you're driving every day or when you're burning the heating your house or heating the water in your house when you burn natural gas that's combustion the food we uh, use in our bodies is a kind of a combustion reaction okay so example problems how much heat is released when 54 grams of glucose is burned according to the following equation so it's the equation we just had in our example right so this equation it has this all balanced out here it's got all the states and this delta H of the comb this comb here means combustion okay so what does this number mean that means there's a little over 2800 kilojoules released per mole remember this delta H is per mole so what do we have we have this many grams of glucose and we know that we have this many kilojoules per mole so what do you think we're going to have to do with these grams of glucose yep so we're gonna have one mole of glucose burned releases 2808 kilojoules so how many moles of glucose are in this problem so we're going to have to change these grams to moles okay the same old stuff grams to moles moles to grams it never goes away Okay, so the molar mass, you figure that out, it's approximately 180 grams per mole. So we take that 54 grams divided by 180 grams per mole, we get 0.3 moles of glucose. So we just multiply the kilojoules times the moles. So this is kilojoules per mole. We multiply it by the moles, the moles will cancel out, and we get 842 kilojoules are released when we burn 54 grams of glucose. Okay, so another problem, how much heat is required to melt 25 grams of solid methanol at its melting point? So this is assuming that the um, methanol has already got to its melting point and we just need to change phase, right? So all these phase changes happen at the melting point, the melting freezing point, the boiling condensation point. That's where all these, phase, these two phase changes happen. So you look on this chart here. And which one are we going to use, vaporization or fusion? Okay, so it says melting. Okay, so melting means fusion, right? Vaporization means turning into a gas. We're changing from a solid to a liquid, so that's fusion. So we have 3.2 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so 3.22 kilojoules per mole. How many moles of methanol are in this problem? So what do you think we're going to have to do with these grams? Okay. So we're going to, um, this is the molar mass of methanol, 32 grams per mole. We have 25 grams. So have a little less than one mole. Take those, change those grams to moles and multiply by the kilojoules per mole and you get 2.59 kilojoules. That's how much kilojoules of energy is required to melt that solid methanol. Okay, so that's not too bad. So the amount of energy required to melt one mole, that's the enthalpy of fusion. Now, don't get it confused with the melting or vaporizing, all these things. This is fusion when we uh, melt it. It's not called melting, it's called fusion. Okay, so thermal energy equation specifies changes in enthalpy, right? Heat. Okay, so that was it for this one. We're going to do more of this delta H stuff in the next section, but that was it for now.